I'm Mari Pratt. I'm a, a resident of Duxbury. I'm also on Duxbury Select Board. Um, my concern with this project is when they close that road down, I live at this end of Duxbury, so one thing I'll be, uh, my fire response will be lessened because Moortown is my fire department. Mm -hmm. um, that's a concern that I have, along with the fact that the Stevens Book is going to become a flow through. Yeah. At that time, we're still going to have a flow through from River Road with the Waterbury construction, even though it's not an official uh, detour, it's used. Um, and I'm very concerned with that because we have a mile of Stevens Brook that we own, and I think you guys have like a mile and a half. But that's all roads going to be used more, they're dirt roads. And uh, those are my concerns with this and, and how it might be addressed. Okay. with uh, J.D. McCarthy, uh, winter of 2018, that was the scoping phase of the project. Um, we've now developed final, plan, final plans. Um, so this is uh, another opportunity that we want to go out and uh, uh, kind of give you an update of where we are with the project and uh, to uh, get any more additional comments. And we just had a, a great one right, right here already. So it's, I'm, glad, I'm glad we came out. Uh, so I'm here tonight uh, with Fiona Barros, who is the um, the design engineer for the project, and uh, Jennifer Zorn, uh, if folks may have seen or heard her, um, she's a, our public outreach um, contact, the public information consultant is the, the title she has now, um, and we've uh, hired her um, to basically get the word out about the project, um, so folks um, won't be surprised and they can be informed about what's going on uh, as we um, proceed through our process. So just a quick highlights of the agenda. Um, well, uh, Bianca's gonna talk about the existing bridge condition uh, and the uh, proposed replacement structure. So we'll talk about uh, what the site uh, will look like in the future. Uh, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about the, the project schedule from this point on. And uh, this, is, this will be a bridge closure. So we have some detour routes uh, and we'll talk about that and some maps for you guys to take a look at. And then uh, any other questions or comments folks may have, uh, we can uh, discuss it at the end of the presentation. Uh, so with that, I'll have Rafiana uh, and she can come up and she can talk about the existing bridge. Hi, I'm Fiona Barros, I'm the engineer on the project. And as you can see here, this is an overview of the bridge. It's on 100 gate going over the Mad River. Um, north of the structure, you head right into Moortown. And south of the structure, you head toward Whitfield. Um, so the existing bridge was originally constructed in 1928. Uh, it's structurally deficient at this point in time, and uh, it has a less than desirable roadway width. Also, the bridge rating is a five for the deck, the superstructure, and the substructure, according to our bridge inspection team. And the overall sufficiency rating is 63.6 out of 100. So as you can see, this is the existing bridge before the concrete barriers were put in. Um, and the travel lane width is only 10 feet wide, and there's no shoulders. And our standards, uh, we would typically have a minimum of 11 foot travel lanes, both of 
them and also have four foot shoulders. So that's what we mean by it's too narrow. Um, and currently, because the barriers were deficient, we put in um, concrete barriers and traffic lights, so we have only one lane alternating traffic at this time. And a lot of the concrete and the curbs, the fascias, underneath all these T-beams uh, are spalling and cracking. And also the substructure, you can see the cracks in the face of the abutment, the spalling, and it's starting to lose connection with the ledge that it's sitting on, the bedrock that it's sitting on. So also, as you can see, this is if you're looking toward the Waysfield direction, so you're looking south, uh, standing in the river, and this was washed out during Hurricane Irene, and these blocks were placed there to between the fill and the roadway as a temporary fix. Um, so a little bit about the proposed structure. We plan to do a concrete deck on steel girders. We're still going to have the spread footings on ledge. Um, the span is going to increase from, 90 to, from 59 feet to 92 feet, and the bridge width will be widened for the lanes and the shoulders, and we plan for it to have a safer alignment, and we're going to construct a retaining wall where you saw those blocks. So this is kind of the typical section if you were to be standing on the bridge and cut down the center of it. You see the girders on the bottom, the concrete deck. Uh, you see that the width has increased. We have the 11-foot travel lane, the 4-foot shoulders on both sides, and we would be changing to this uh, box beam guardrail. So in this top figure, you can see that the dashed lines, if you're looking at the side of the bridge, the dashed lines are where the water currently is, and our span is increasing and the height is increasing. So that means that the hydraulic capacity will be increasing a little bit. Um, also, here you can see, this is the top view of the bridge, and the lighter lines are the old edges of the road, and the darker lines are the new ones. So you see it's straightening out a little bit, and it's actually going to be much wider. So it makes for safer travel through the bridge area. So it's right, right now, well before the concrete barriers were put in, it was two 10-foot lanes, so it was 20 feet. And now it's going to be two 11-foot lanes and four, so 30 feet. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of my way of trying to show you how the alignment is changing. Basically, this is a survey, and this lighter stuff um, are the edges of the existing alignment. So the red is the edges of the road, and you see how it swerves more than this overtopping view. And the yellow is the new alignment. And basically, we're just increasing the radiuses of these approach curves to increase safety. And then this is the overview of where the retaining wall will go. So this is the front view. It'll be protected by this stone fill on this bank that the water comes through. That retaining wall will retain that fill now. Um, so, methods for construction, we're doing a combination of accelerated bridge construction and conventional construction. And our overall goal was to mix the two and have the most efficient design. We wanted to make sure that the duration of the construction of the project was less than 60 days, just to avoid the um, detouring the, bus, the buses. That was our biggest concern. Um, and so some accelerated elements were precast footings, deck panels, um, and we have rapid setting concrete to do some connections. And some conventional components that we included are the sub footings, so just pouring uh, concrete onto the ledge, and then also um, the deck overpour to make sure that there's a smooth ride on the top. So this is kind of what our precast um, approach slabs would look like. They're size so that they can be placed with a crane, and then we'll fill them with rapid setting concrete, which takes less time to cure than if they were fully made out of concrete in place. Um, we're also implementing some deck panels. So these can be installed quicker than formwork, and it's also a little bit safer because people don't have to be hanging off the girders to install the formwork. This is kind of an overview of the panels. They'll be resting on each side on the girders, and this is just an overview of the bridge deck. 
And then on top of the panels, they'll do a mat of reinforcing and actually pour the top of that portion. So half of it will be the cast in place of concrete. And then this is one of the conventional methods of our construction. And really, we need to just pour right onto the ledge. They'll clean it off and they'll put dowels in it. And it's just so that we have a really good connection between the ledge and the footing. Because all the weight is going right down to that. Um, finally, this is another bridge that will have similar components to what you'll expect to see for the Morton Bridge. So they'll have the steel girders, we'll have the concrete deck, and we'll have black um, guardrail, and it'll be the three box scene guardrail. Okay. Any questions so far? The quick set, concrete. I've always been taught that the quick set, even though it sets faster, it's not as strong overall. So this is um, kind of a manufactured um, concrete. It's one that's a mixed design from a supplier. We have a specification um, where it can cure in 24 hours, um, but it is uh, performed very well in the, our past projects. And it holds uh, sufficient PSI to it as it sets as well? Yep, yeah, it's uh, 4,000 PSI, it's the same as a, a deck concrete. Um, but it has an expansion admixture in it, um, so the shrinkage, I think in, a, in past connections, uh, when you connect concrete and concrete, wet concrete wants to shrink and you end up with some cracking. So there's some, uh, some admixtures that they put in this that makes it a little different than our normal concrete. Uh, what's the expected life cycle structure? This is a design life of uh, 75 years. So it's our two. 75 years. It's our uh, typical, um, it's a guidance from our, our Ashto design that all new bridges that we um, design have a 75 year design. Have they done anything better with expansion joints? Yes. Um, this actually had. Um, you didn't expect that question. No, it's a good one. <laughs> I think you were at our last meeting. We talked about bare decks. <laughs> um, so this is what we call a semi-integral design. Uh, so what it is, uh, the, the, the pictures that you show of the bedrock, you're familiar with the site, the, 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 the substructures will be founded on bedrock, um, but the bearings will actually hang over the side on both sides. So rather than all your expansion happening on one side and having a metal um, joint to maintain, we split it on both sides. So you reduce that amount of moment, the, the amount of expansion, and you have a much more uh, maintainable joint. To, so they're to better than what we put in when we did the interstate. We either. hope so. We hope I so. Would hope. There's still metal joints on the interstate, though. Yeah. Some bridges are pretty big. I can uh, tell you that. This bridge is uh, <laughs> uh, not as big as those. So they're going to be the asphalt and plug joints that you're putting in? Correct. I have a question. Sure. Uh, so with the, the, the new width and the new layout, I'm anticipating the traffic is going to go faster through there. And I was just wondering if you considered that in your design anywhere in the approach to the village of slowing down traffic. Um, well, I guess it's, we really match the, even though we are straightening out slightly, it's still an S curve. So it's, it is going to be still a windy curve, and I believe there's another curve before you get to the village. And so it's still um, a curvy road. We're not straightening out, so folks are, are still going to have to... The other curve is going to stay where it is. Right. So and you're still going to have a curve before our bridge that's the same. It's just at the bridge, it's slightly, slightly different. Um, so the project schedule is we're going to advertise this in October. Uh, and we'll have a contractor on board uh, through the fall. Uh, and we expect them uh, to start work in probably April, May time frame and start mobilizing to the site. Um, we're going to have another public meeting, so folks, you know, right before construction, um, we'll, we'll get an uh, update on the contractor's schedule um, and just get to meet the contractor and, and see, uh, you know, let them participate in the public process as well. And it's a little bit closer to the closure, um, so we'll get the, the word out about the project um, a little sooner, a little closer to the project. Um, so that will be in the April-May time frame. Uh, the contract, we expect the, the closure uh, to start in the third week of June and continue in the third week of August uh, during the school summer break. Um, and then, uh, so really traffic will be open at the end of August, but the contractor is still going to be around um, to do a lot of the vegetation and, 
and um, working on other um, uh, activities that will affect traffic. Are they planning on their doing the vegetation stuff? Are they planning on having down to one lane with flaggers during the day to do their work? I don't anticipate that. I imagine there's going to be deliveries where, yeah, they may, um, uh, you may expect flaggers um, before and during after the closure. Probably more likely to put up signs and mobilize and that type of thing. Um, so the detour. Um, so the folks are probably familiar, 100 and 100B are, are close to parallel to each other. They both uh, end on Route 2 um, north of Moortown. Uh, we're detouring traffic from where Route 100B uh, intersects Route 2 in Middlesex. They go west on Route 2 to uh, Duxbury and Waterbury area, and you travel Route 100 south back um, to just below the village. And this is the uh, example of the sign sheet that the contractor will get. So we have all of the signs prepared um, for him to, to order. Um, and there's a sheet showing uh, the complexity of the, the number of signs that we'll have out there to uh, let people know that the, the road's closed and they need to follow the, the state detour. Um, can we talk about the detour for a second? Sure. Yeah, Fred Ness is way too. Okay. Meadow Road. Meadow Road? Meadow Road, okay. which hooks into North Road, Pony Farm Road. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and the other one. People, people familiar with the valley are not going to use that. Sure. They're going to go right by my house and quite a few others. Sure. What is your plan to control traffic? So, so we understand that when a, uh, you, know, you have a, a state route and then you, you, know, you disconnect that state route, that local folks are going to go like the, 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 the distance that's easiest for them. So we understand that local folks are going to do what they need to do, use the local roads, because those local roads can, I know, are, are not signed for trucks, right? So we can't put um, state route traffic on local roads. Yeah, yeah. and so the, you know, the trucks need to follow that, that state route. But if you're a vehicle, then you can use the local roads as long as you have a vehicle. Now, what's your plan? I mean, you guys have So, yep. Look after the road and the infrastructure of right. the, the local town road. So what we have is um, a grant. Um, I can, I'm going to work with the town closer to construction once we have a, a contractor on board. Um, it's called a local bypass grant, um, and we issue it to the towns, um, and we can discuss uh, what you think a um, a local route would be that you think would see a lot of traffic and we kind of use the mileage, and if that road um, is gravel, it's going to likely need um, dust and ice control, general maintenance, um, but a big one um, that we can include in the grant for a calculation is enforcement, right? So, you know, tractor trailers going down your road, not supposed to be there, so you have an enforcement present, um, so they don't do that. So it really depends on the route. We've had, we've had a local routes that go from two different towns, and so we have to coordinate with two towns. If you think there's a local route that goes, that just stays in one town, it'd be one town. Um, but we want to work with the select board to kind of pick that one local route um, and to develop that grant. Well, it is the, okay. the bypass, the shortcut. The shortcut? Okay. If, if it's really clear to everybody, that's great. Let me know what it is, and then we can, we can address it pretty easily. Okay. That'll be easy to calculate then. It's going to take a lot of greater work to keep it smooth, too. It, and that's right, and that's, that's what the grant is for. You'll have another meeting before our, with the select board, open meeting like this? Uh, we will a uh, month before the closure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rob, we have had some issues in the past, like the, the bridge, um, as you go out toward the middle sex, and um, the, the signage wasn't good at all, okay. and um, we definitely had some um, speeding issues up on Moortown Common and so on. We want, we do not want to go through that again. Sure. So I'm just mentioning now, I want as much control from the state as possible. Sure. I want to see law enforcement out there because we don't have any, we don't have an extra sheriff, and uh, so I just want to make that known that we need more than was done last time. And Rob, I'll say one thing. 
People do not read signs. <laughs> that, that is true. You guys, you guys right. are wasting your money on signs, I'll tell you. It's I wish so. And it? that's why, but they do follow um, speed feedback signs and blue lights get people's attention. Oh, wow, that's a different story. And so we can uh, uh, elevate the presence to, to get people's attention. So uh, I, I'm a psychos in the New Stop Road, Floating Farm, North Road, a lot. And I can attest to that right now, people are taking that road to avoid the traffic light. Okay. And and the speed is ridiculous that they drive. Just you know, save that one minute, or whatever. It's like right. insane. So, yeah, I mean, uh, enforcement is going to be key, and for, especially for the people who live on it. With, you know, who live on that road. Absolutely. You know, it's, there's no way all the people aren't going to use that, and including out of towners, you know about it. <coughs> we had a sheriff sit in front of our house a few years ago. And the speed limit by there was 40 miles an hour. He said the average was 55. And I'm sure he was busy. He was busy. Okay. Yeah, he caught people before the village that were doing over 60. <laughs> that same day. Yep. And again, with a part of the, the public outreach piece, you know, we let folks know that there's going to be a police presence. You know, that, that's part of it as well. You know, our, our intent isn't to make money off of speeders. You know, we want everybody to slow down. And um, I'm, I'm concerned over people using our driveway, um, which happens already, and we're fine with local people using the driveway to make like, that hard turn onto Pony Farm Road, and the increase that that could bring to our driveway okay. um, area as people try to, you know, so is that, make is it that turn around. around? It, well, there's a, it's a sharp turn for people mm -hmm. already, okay. and we took a mailbox out, and it's it's nice for people they can now kind of use that as a little bit of extra room because it's narrow there as you kind of go up the hill and right. we don't have a problem but I think if the increase of that happening that could be a lot of wear and tear on our driveway and I'm okay. concerned over that. Thank you. Actually two questions. One is um, what, I, I, you may have covered this in the beginning, but what, um, will this change the character of the way the water flows through that area? And if it does, how will that change it? There was. flattens out and goes back up. That's the pre-existing rock and stuff that the water's going to float. There you go. Okay, so. okay. Yeah, this is, this is water where it's straight. That's just a point because the surveyors couldn't get down there because the, the velocities are so high. Um, so, but this is existing bedrock that we're leaving into. Right, the, the when you make narrow, like you go through a pipe, and you have a hose, but you make it narrower, 
velocities get higher and it causes more erosion. So by having it um, more, having more bridge length up higher will hopefully slow that down. Um, but one of the benefits of bedrock is that it's, it's a very strong foundation, right? We're going to cast concrete right to the bedrock. So it's essentially going to be rock in the end um, so that it's a very strong structure. Are you guys planning on going back any further from where it is now? Because there's a corner there, the stream has a corner right there. And that's actually where it eroded the floor was before the bridge structure. Yep. So it is, it is getting a little bit longer. Uh, let's see, the existing abutment is this dashed line right here, and the new abutment is here. So you can see where it's shifting over. And this is the area where we had the erosion before. And that's now replacing that with a wing wall. So before, actually I don't know what was there before, I think it was just a hold up, laid up stone wall. So not a whole lot of engineering was put into that original um, retaining wall. Um, our new retaining wall extends quite a ways around the corner. It's pretty long, so it hopefully will be a sort of good armament for the future. Back to the local roots around the bridge again. Okay. Our prior experience was, depending on the weather during the time when traffic is being directed, okay. those roads could get significant wear, and not, not just cosmetic. Is there provision in the grant to cover that? Right, so it's both like dust and ice control is, is more of a convenience and I'll keep the dust and ice down, but we also have a maintenance item in that as well. So for potholes and anything that comes up, mm -hmm. that, that's all part of it. I'm sorry, I apologize. I, the notice I got was the meeting started at 6.15, so apparently I missed yeah, it. You know, in the front porch forum, yeah. that's what it was. But, so I might have missed a little in the beginning obviously. So is the bridge, from just seeing that, it's going to be a, a wider than it is now, a bit wider yes. than it is now? Yes. So that'll actually accommodate one of those little sort of side lanes for that uh, cyclists can shoulders. use? Four foot shoulders? Yes. And 11 foot lanes, the existing one was two 10 foot shoulders, which is very different. And I believe that's consistent with the Route 100. be some cost estimates out there right now, right? Uh, I do, I don't know how to top my head. Around two million? Around two million. Two million. Two million. Jennifer, I don't think I got you a chance to come up here yet. Um, I want to introduce uh, Jennifer Zorn, our public outreach. Yeah, hi everyone. So my role on the job is to keep all of you informed the absolute best way that I can. Uh, email is a great way. If you want to send me an email, I can add you to our email updates. But you can unsubscribe any time that you want to. You can also get me by phone. I do have an 802 phone number as well, which I will email to you. This, I work in a couple different offices. That's obviously an office in New Hampshire, but I work out of our South Burlington office also. Um, so we want to keep you as form, informed as much as possible. I'm really just going to be the filter. Um, if you have questions, reach out to me, your concerns, or you're having problems, I'm going to be in direct contact with Rob and Fiona on a regular basis, as well as the contractor who is eventually hired. So I should be able to answer most of your questions and solve the problems quickly, but I have access to everyone else on the team immediately, so we'll have contact you know, probably every day for the two month closure period, so I'll be able to get back to you immediately. So you can send me an email if you want to be added to the list or you have a question or also you can write your email down here if you want to. Um, lots of ways to get a hold of me. Also, I've been working with Sasha Elwell. Is Sasha here today? Thank you for everything. You've been so wonderful. Um, Sasha also has my contact information. So if you don't want to be on the, the newsletter tonight, um, if you change your mind, just reach out to Sasha if you wouldn't mind, and then you can just give them my email, and we'll just get everybody added up. So someone from the town already reached out to me as well, and which I'm sure they got my email from you. So thank you. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to working with everybody. We're going to do our best to make this as, uh, as smooth of a project as possible. 
And uh, if you're on that list, um, once the uh, construction starts, we'll also have um, updates. So even if you don't have a question, you'll get emails saying you know how the contractor's doing, how much progress he's making, and you can kind of follow the project as it picks up. Has it gone out to bid yet, or we not? Not yet. Yeah. Uh, October. October. Wow, who is there? Can you put that uh, initial uh, diagram that shows the you know the structure of the bridge? We first started. Uh, the satellite view? Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess we did start about five minutes earlier. Okay. That's the one. Not in the diagram to show the, the width and the Do you have a question or are you just... No, no, I just wanted to oh, sure oh, anybody else, some of the people that came in after we started, if they had any specific The questions. existing structure, you saw it was concrete. It was very typical in the past. Um, they, they cast in place it was a large sections of concrete. It was very conservative. Um, it's pretty standard now in candy. Um, Precast concrete sections for shorter spans, uh, for, for a span in the uh, probably 70 to 150 foot range. Um, we like to use steel. And then we have a concrete surface uh, for, uh, for, travel, for trucks and cars to travel. Was, was there much ledge on the southern end of that bridge? Oh, uh, there was ledge on both sides. I know, I ain't worried about this side, but on the southern end next to the cemetery, is there quite a lot of ledge there? It, it dives down very quickly. It's steeper, isn't it? It is. You're going to take more concrete at that point. Yes, and the, yeah, the retaining wall is not on bedrock. The retaining right. wall is, yeah. is kind of up on by the Absolutely. road. Absolutely. Yeah. Originally, we were talking about stretching out the bridge more, but it seems like it's going to be in the same area. It's like rotated slightly. It was a lot more before. I mean, you kind of see where it's, you know, it's really the same point here, but then you can see how it diverges <laughs> on that side. So it's really just kind of rotated slightly. I think maybe you had a better picture, you know. That's kind of the now in red, and that's the new one, yep. Oh, that could be. I mean, if, yes, if the previous scoping report had three or four options that we presented, this was the final one. Um, so I understand the utilities are going to be done pretty soon here. So have you commented on that and if that's going to impact the road, the closures, and would you know when exactly that's going to get done? So I think yeah, so soon. the utilities is kind of uh, ending our right-of-way process. Uh, once we obtain um, the right-of-way for, for the project, um, the utility companies kind of get the green light for that. And that hasn't happened yet. Um, that will likely happen in the September, October time frame. Um, so when the contractor gets awarded, it'll only be in the fall, but he's going to take the fall to do all the prefabrication and everything he needs to get ready for the closure. That's also the same time that utility companies also have to move utilities. Uh, what uh, uh, Jamie, correct? Yeah. Jamie's talking about, and we didn't show here, uh, we met with Jamie several times because his uh, property is, is affected by the utilities. The existing one come around on the north side and the new proposal well, that they'll have one new pole on the south side here, and then they'll cross on this side. So there'll be some, um, you'll see some trucks, some utility trucks. Um, there's several utilities on the lines. They're gonna make a presence throughout the winter, so don't get nervous, they're not about to close the bridge in January. Um, they're just working on the utilities. Uh, one question, uh, Jamie, uh, I get that first property as it comes up out of the village. And over the last five years, it's gotten to be about 10 feet wider than it was. I've been there 35 years, and the road has gotten, I don't know, this is, we're addressing this to the town or whatever. I've just noticed a gradual increase in the width every year of the road. Uh, in this last year, uh, my driveway actually used to go down to the road, and now it goes up. 
by almost opposite. So the water and the snow is draining a lot worse into my front yard. Is this a kind of a temporary thing or is it something that's gonna get corrected after all this happens? I mean, John, you and I have talked about this for way too long. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, it's getting worse and the dust is, is awful. I can barely sit on my porch this summer, so bad. So is there any mitigation out there for, again, how much traffic is allowed up Pony Farm Road? So I, I guess as far as our project is concerned, it, it's temporary, right? We're gonna, the, the grant is for the bridge project. So after the bridge project, it's whatever the, the town is maintaining those roads. So I just, again, in the last year, year and a half, I've been noticing that road getting wider constantly. Is that, is that a permanent thing or is that a temporary oh, thing? Or? All right. Maybe we should take another look at that. Sure. Like my, my property line is that I've lost about three feet of a pro property for the last 10 years there. Okay. Yeah, we'll take a look. Thank you. Is there any resurfacing going to be done in the village or anything at this time with the state? Yeah. It's been there a long is. time since we've had any new asphalt from that bridge up through to the corner. There. Many years. You ask all the great questions. Huh? <laughs> you ask all the great questions. Um, so the paving department is separate from structures. I we do that's bridges. That's what I wondered if it would be included or it would be included. It'd be nice to have it all done at the same time. Yeah. Um, it, I think it might be possible. Um, we are working with our paving section. There is a section of 100B that is in the paving program. And so we're gonna coordinate with them. We're not sure if it's gonna be right after, maybe it's the next year, it may be in um, September, yeah, okay. um, following that. Um, we talked about the signs, so the paving project and the bridge project, that may be confusing to folks if you got both going on at the same time. Um, but there is one planned for either later in the fall or the fall. Something about that bridge, the old bridge, you know, they, they put that up with horses and that cement was all mixed by hand in the 28th. And think of the amount of weight trucks are today that still go across that bridge. Amazing, huh? In the old days, they built things mostly to last. And today, they build things so we can build them again in 20 years. <laughs> it's a fact, isn't it? There's definitely some concrete that's still holding strong. I've made a lot of it. Now, I will point out, I mean, we have several projects that are going on at the same time. So, the paving through the village is going to be happening also. Okay. As well as the sidewalks. Yeah, the sidewalk will be going to water, John. Pardon me? Yeah. 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 But and that, that is scheduled for next summer? Yes. Yeah. The sidewalks and the pavings. Sidewalk and the pavings. <laughs> and keep your fingers crossed because that's dependent on bids for the sidewalk project because we don't want the paving to happen for the sidewalk project. There's some drainage going on in the road. So okay. things have to happen in order. So, uh, and, and this is through our um, uh, map, folks, the sidewalk project. Is that through the state? Or are you doing that on your own? No, 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 it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's three. That's three projects to coordinate this. This new fabric you're putting on bridges is that really doing good for you compared to asphalt? You, you have a new fabric on a lot of these new bridges compared to asphalt. Well, we, we used to put all asphalt, but we got a new fabric now, and it seems to be working quite well. Um, there is some bridge with some new type of, of pavement or better design pavement, um, but this bridge will be concrete. There won't be any pavement on the bridge. So, so this is concrete? Grew. Yes. And it will be grouped, correct. Okay. When you're just getting back with three projects, I mean, obviously, that, that, I, I don't see how you're going to be able to pull that off three projects at, at the same time. So, you know, just for the construct, physical construction, never mind the, the car traffic. Mm -hmm. Just the, the, the actual work. Maybe that'll send you know. a car over 100. Maybe. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Well, the, the paving project wouldn't happen until after the sidewalk, so it'd be two projects. So, you know, concrete trucks and machinery. And yeah. When you say grooved, does that mean it's going to be, you're going to be able to hear it? So the grooving now, um, we've changed to longitudinal grooving. I don't think we had many um, projects that um, did transverse grooving. 
Um, if you travel through a lot of states, you know, on the interstate, you hear a high-pitched you know, kind of vibration when you go through that. Um, Vermont just started using bare decks at a time when longitudinal grooving was just coming out. And so we've kind of adopted longitudinal um, from the beginning. Yeah. So, so the grooves go parallel so you don't have that noise. So the question would be, is it similar to being smooth? In Correct. Terms of noise? Yeah, exactly. That's the idea, because you, when you put it transverse, you just have the angle of the tires makes a noise where you yeah, have the bridge. same uh, friction, but not the noise. The bridge down by the town common on 100B is already one of those grooved bridges mm -hmm. in, in the same aspect they're doing. And it's not too. That was a rehab that we did a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I the one right by the common? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Just by a dam. There's a dam right there. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was an I-beam. Um, there was a discussion earlier about emergency services. I also want to talk about, um, in addition to the public meeting, we also have the contractor meet with all the emergency services. Um, so that's a big part of the public outreach and the coordination. Um, so everybody knows when this bridge is closed, um, so if they have a plan, you know, that where they, you know, where their routes were originally, they may have to change their routes so that you know when that happens. Um, so we'll have emergency services meeting, uh, usually about two weeks before, maybe a month before the closure. Any other questions? Suggesting that we name the driveway now, mm -hmm. so to save them some trouble later on. Um, they have suggested three names that they would like for the private road. Rock Bridge Road is their favorite because I understand this was the name of the family business that had existed there in the past, mm -hmm. so that is their, their number one preference. Rock Bridge Lane is their second, and Shepherd Drive is their third. I've researched the adjoining names of roads and adjoining towns, and there is no road that I think would be a conflict with the uh, State Environmental Commission. There are several roads in adjacent towns that have rock, and several that have bridge, but none has a combination of them. So I don't foresee any confusion whatsoever. So if the board pleases, I would like to register the name of E91 as Rock Bridge Road. Is that the motion? Or do we yeah, actually, it's Rockbridge Drive. Rockbridge Drive. Okay. So, yes, the first. That is your first preference. That is your okay. first preference. One word or two? Uh, three. Rockbridge well, yeah. Drive. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Was that a test? <laughs> <laughs> Only me. <laughs> um, I move that we accept your recommendation. Second. Any more discussion on that? Across, is that where like the old, like the old apartment or something like that was over there? Uh, the old uh, motor court. Yeah, the motor right court. Right down by the bridge. Okay. Right mm -hmm. down by the river along there. Mm -hmm. Just right. Okay. So a business, it's a business one in there? Uh, three separate apartment buildings were approved years ago. Yeah. Uh, 
three buildings, three units each. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when they resubmitted their application, nothing was changed and it just expired. So they just renewed it, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And the second item is uh, permit fees for zoning applications for the tearing down of buildings. Now, I will say that this is the first issue that I differ respectfully with the previous zoning administrator. He did not enforce um, permits to tear down a building. My reading of the zoning is any change of use requires a permit, and if you're tearing the building down, you're changing its use from whatever it was to nothing. I'm not just being technical here, but there is a practical use for enforcing people to put in zoning applications, and that is that that is the vehicle in which the listers get mm -hmm. the information that there's been a change, either up or down in terms of, of tax. So I would suggest the select board sets the fees, I would suggest that a minimal fee be required for this activity. Uh, I would suspect it would, on average, take me less than an hour to do this. And if we're on, on a uh, prospect of making fees be equivalent to the expenditure of the town, then I would suggest $20 fee for this activity would be appropriate with the $15 recording fee for the, for the clerk. So just as a hypothetical, what happens if there is no such enforcement? What is the route that that information eventually gets to the listers by? And what effect does it have? Try by the there is There is no, no vehicle to yeah. formally give that information. So it's people continue paying higher taxes based on the presumed use of the building? Correct. And we complain about this, why? <laughs> I'm not complaining about it, but I'm pointing out no, 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 no. that uh, to me, mm -hmm. my reading of the law says I have to enforce it and mm -hmm. it means it requires a permit. Now, I don't charge the fee. If you don't want to set a fee, you can have a permit with no fee. Mm -hmm. I would like to propose a permit with no fee. Okay. Is that a uh, motion? That's a motion. Okay. I'd like my motion to have a deconstruction permit with no fee. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Further discussion on that? Mm -hmm. That's good. The uh, zoning regulations for both zoning permits and DRV applications uh, have penalties for either construction before the permit is applied for or before the DRV is approved it of double the fee. So in this case, <laughs> two times zero is zero. I just want to point that out to you. So there's not much incentive to put in the permits, but if, if that's what you're... I, I think the incentive is there probably will reduce their taxes when they take down a building. That should be their incentive. Okay. Okay. And all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you folks have anything else? Like, so that was a new repair to hear about that. So it's, okay. it's us. It's, it's deconstructing. Oh, okay. So you're deconstructing. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I mean, he, we talked to him previously. He's like, you know, I'm going to propose this instead of, it was going to be like, you know, pretty, in, in, not an insignificant amount of money to do the permit. So he was like, this doesn't seem right to me. I'm going to try to see if we can get a change. So we just want to figure out how to play that. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, no. Thank you. Okay, yes, yes, you. Yes, you. All right, moving along, reports and communications and announcements.
Gal, do you have anything? I have nothing. Jason? I have nothing. Ray? Um, only following up from the last meeting. <clears throat> um, see, I spoke to Martin about the pony fire mode, and I think that got taken care of. As well as, I believe she talked to Robin. It, it actually, excuse me, it, it did, but some of the ground has already come out. It's actually already being knocked out again. Oh. So it, it is, it's, it's just any, any time you have that with the pavement, the way the pavement ends in, in the gravel, right. it, it seems like that's, uh, you know, that, that happens. So I don't know if, hmm. what can be done, but I mean, it's not as bad, but I mean, there's still a dip there. Okay. I think he's asked for it. I just talked to him. So. Well, that's what, that's what we were just discussing, actually. That, you know, perhaps mm -hmm. that's a, a, a place for, you know, especially with, you know, the upcoming mm -hmm. groups, so. So, so uh, uh, Mark should look at it again. Like yeah, I guess, I guess. I guess. And I will. It's been quite a bit of time to warn. I don't think I've been by there tomorrow. Um, yeah. So it needs asphalt to face for it. Well, we would. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think the state's going to hmm. pay for it. I'm sure it's like that. But it would be it would be good to take a look at that with, with Williams again. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not opposed to paving it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the incentive or when we did the uh, village hill, we got the asphalt for the same installation prices when they were doing one hundred feet. That was that was a good reason okay. then. Mm -hmm. We did it, and same went over by the Scribner firm. Mm -hmm. We extended that pavement through there and got it at the same rate because of the paving project. So, all right. Yeah. So it sounds like there's potential. <coughs> yeah. If you had to guess, what would this cost us? Uh, I couldn't even guess without measuring it. Mm -hmm. Not sure how how long the distance we're talking about. Anything else? No. Okay. Okay, so um, see, we talked about um, the grant. So that was uh, in the email. And then I also have been back and forth with Doug Henson regarding the Pine tree, right? the long pine. Um, seems that the, the state would like to take that down as part of the sidewalk project, and uh, that supposedly is the last the last piece uh, of the puzzle. So I got in touch with uh, the landowner, uh, Rachel Miltner, and she has mixed feelings about it. Mm -hmm. um, I also. Basically, it said to Doug that uh, you know it's in the state right of way too. So you know, I mean, I guess the state would have the final final word. So you know, that's I just wanted to see how the rest of the board felt about it before I gave gave the okay. Yeah, uh, you know, like, it's a great tree, but it's in the wrong place. Yeah, that, that's exactly how I feel yeah. about it. But if it's if it is still sound, I think to take it down. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, can we? It's. I, mean, I know that people, people have, you know, people have, um, um, you know, complained about it, mm -hmm. hampering visibility. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily see that it that it does. Is, if anything, I think it makes people a little bit more careful there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and that's why we haven't, haven't had any I, accidents. I think the main impediment to visibility there actually is in the winter when the, um, 
when the general store plows and mm -hmm. there's a pile of snow there and right. I never remember to bring that up, but um, the right. context came up. That right. that is dangerous. Yeah. But not not the tree, I don't think. Right. But I mean it's in a very dangerous place, it really is. My guess is the tree probably won't last for ten more years anyways. It's a gonna be an expensive operation. I mean, you have to get grain and everything to get that mm -hmm. down. So I think they get the state to help pay for it. Right. You know. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing. That's uh, that, that is if, a good point. Mm -hmm. if it ever came down now, it's in their right of way. Would they have to pay for it anyway or not? Only if they, only if they wanted to take it down, right. that would be the deal. Okay. So, so this is, mm. it's like an opportunity. Now, this is the second time it's come up, but the last time it came up was when we were doing the repaving, and my understanding at that point was that they were going to fix that whole intersection a little bit, which they never really did. Yeah. They, uh, they decided, yeah, they, they didn't need to have that tree taken out. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Um, I, so, uh, I mean, I, I can we wait? All, all things considered, mm -hmm. with, with the, the, the fact that the sidewalk is going, it would be, to me, it's a, an opportunity to do something about that intersection a little, a little bit anyway. Any, anything is better than nothing. Yeah. I mean, they talk about moving mm -hmm. the, the, the pole and everything, and they never, never did that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, uh, I thought something that would be a big help would be a large convex mirror on the other side of the street. Yeah, that's right, you had mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Never followed up on it. Right. Um, Yeah, because I, when I got back to Doug on it, I, I mentioned that a few years ago when the hill was repaved, there was also talk of creating somewhat better visibility at that intersection. Uh, that never happened. Is there any chance if the tree were to be removed that there could be overall improvement? He didn't, didn't address that at all. Mm -hmm. So he just said, you're correct in saying the tree's in the 100 feet right of way. I cannot say with any certainty that removing it would increase visibility at the intersection. No. Mm -hmm. That's fair. And it was actually, I guess, this is the other question I, I said is how come this is coming up now? Why didn't, and I wasn't mentioned at the very beginning when we were talking about you know, the whole project. And he said that it was, um, I, I guess there's a, a, a new person, oh, it was when, um, uh, uh, his name retired. Um, the one that just retired recently. From the state? Yeah, from AO2, the shuttle's contact, as oh, it was. Well, whoever, whoever's I, the name escapes at this point, mm -hmm. but. Um, Not Doug Newton? No. No. Tom Anderson? No. <laughs> oh, 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 you're talking, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I just remember. What? Well, I'm sorry. Is it Warren? <coughs> no. Well, at any rate, uh, that, uh, I didn't print that email out, I guess. Um, somebody, his replacement, uh, she's the one that brought, brought it up, so. Yeah. What's her name? That yeah, was not other email. Oh, actually, I don't think he even mentioned her name. All right, well. Um, I, what do you think? You're the town, you're the tree guy. Oh, gosh, I know. Um, I mean, personally, I mean, I've always defended the tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, a lot of, some of that had to do with, um, you know, cutlers as well. Yeah. But it doesn't seem that Rachel is overly concerned. And, um, I mean, this is this is holding things up. I think in terms of you know, any of the final final plans going out to bid and so on. I think personally, I think the tree should go. Yeah. 
brother, right? Can they think about it? Do you know? <laughs> it's causing you pain. Well, I don't know. It's causing, it's causing, it's causing me a lot of pain, too. Uh, or do you want to, how much time do we have? Do you want to think about it and, and, and make a decision in the next meeting? Do we, do we need to get more input from you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that we're going to be starting the, the, the meetings, the committee meetings. Um, so let me, yeah, let me, let me get back to Doug on that and see. Look, I, I appreciate the extra time. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay. okay. Ray said it perfectly, it's a great tree in the wrong place. So right, right, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the last piece was the communication regarding that, uh, the letter from John Martin. Um, regarding uh, the issues that he's having with Eric Titrud. <coughs> Everybody had a chance to look at that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think it's, I mean, it's not a select board issue. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other, I, I mean, he's complaining about public records being accessed, essentially. Mm -hmm. Well, but... So, I'm missing... Yeah, I mean, if, if, if Eric is, is doing that as on the Development Review Board, I mean, I don't see that that's, that should be okay. Well... I don't see necessarily that he's doing it as someone on the development review board. Anybody can look at records. Well, that's that's true, right? So I don't. We may not have the whole story here, but I don't see any action he's taking as part of the development review board, which then might be questionable. Right. Right. So am, am I missing something? Or I just don't see. No, I mean, I guess I mean. I, I guess if, if he's talking about not putting dirt next to the brook and things like that, um, you know, to, to me that's uh, just because, because he is on the development review board and he, he knows that he's not supposed to be doing that. But. But I don't know. I mean, everything else, everything else here just seemed to me. It just seemed to be a, a, a neighbor thing, like in the town and all that thing. Do you think uh, John Riley's still a chairman of the DRB, right? Yeah. Is he aware of this? Should he be aware? Of, is there something else going on that maybe maybe he's? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that, that does make sense, and. I'm just having a problem with the logical flow of events here. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. You know, there there may be a problem. Well, it's, it's like yeah, it's it's, it's like it's here. it's almost like we we're brought in the middle of this mm -hmm. thing. I mean, mm -hmm. why? You know, what what's the, the story about him going through records and things like that? Or how does John Martin know he was going through records? Right. Right. So I don't know if he, if or going so Eric far as requesting paperwork he felt should be in the records, but we're not. So, okay. So is he saying? So I mean, I have no idea. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't tell. You yeah, you can't. You just can't. You can't say. So. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry they're not getting along. But it's All right. Why don't we do it? What, Sasha? Why don't you, uh, why don't you copy John Rabbit? Yeah. Send that over to John Williams. <clears throat> or, I, or I can and, and ask him for, well, why don't you do that and ask for his comments? Yeah, that would be good. So that's all I have. Yep, that's all I had. So. Go to the 
minutes of 7.15. Yeah, I wanted to <coughs> correct one thing on that. Um, when I met with Steve McGill, I only met with Steve McGill, I didn't, after talking with him, I didn't feel it was necessary to talk with uh, Gary Hughes uh, because I, I felt that there was no issue um, and they could go forward. So when I t it says Ray had spoken to all involved and everyone was happy. Uh -huh. I think I didn't speak to every, everybody. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Steve and I, you know, I didn't really feel like I had to go any further than that because the issue was at that point a new issue. I felt. Okay. So do you have a correction to be made? Yeah, the correction is Ray did. Uh, I want to correct that, that uh, Ray did not speak to all involved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I was satisfied after talking with Steve that the problem had been resolved. That's okay. what I want to say. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then also when I made the motion to go into an executive session, it was not for labor relation agreements. It was uh, reason number three, and I did read the entire thing out. Um, so that correction should be made for a minute. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And then 29. And, and, and the 29, Sasha did a very good job of the way to make that motion for reason number three. Um, and uh, because it was for the appointment, it was for the evaluation of a public officer or employee. So for employee evaluation under reason number three. So I will move that we accept the minutes of 729. Second. Any discussion on those? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any old business that anybody wants to bring up? So we still haven't, I mean, just to remind you, we still haven't made a motion regarding paying back the reserve fund? Correct. Are we prepared to? Where did I see somewhere that we're going to... So we it sounds like we need to have an article to do that. Have an article at town meeting asking the voters to consider paying to present the amount borrowed. That's right. That's what we're. Uh, <coughs> which minutes was that? That's on seven fifteen. That's on seven fifteen. Okay. 
it's a 715. I, I know I've seen something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So why would we we need the article rather than just include it in our budget for next year? I don't think we don't need the article. Okay. This is what we wanted to discuss. Oh, okay. It seems like we're looking at our accounts that we would just put, you know, I don't think mm -hmm. put it in our budget. I suppose either way, as long as we bring it up explicitly at town meeting, we will just stop. Right. Just something that uh, that at the finance committee we thought we should be as transparent as possible. You know, whether right. that requires an oracle or simply talking about it in yeah. the meeting. Right. I think I would serve that purpose. Right. Right. Well, can you, um, Sasha, can you put that on the agenda for next meeting when, when Tom's here? And we'll discuss it more. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, any other old business? Any new business? Okay. I have a resignation from the shop Yard. Oh. For the rec committee. Oh. And, um, Wayne Pearson sent an email saying that Chuck Burke has shown some interest, but they don't have another meeting until later in this month, so they haven't really had anybody really. Oh, okay. Just so that you guys are aware, Michelle. Okay. Well. <coughs> Okay, uh, to the Moortown Select Board, please accept this letter as my resignation from the Recreation Committee. I have truly enjoyed my time on the committee and I'm proud of how much we've accomplished over these past few years and how much the committee has grown and evolved. It is a wonderful group and the mission of being mindful of the recreational resources and opportunities of Moortown is one I've always been passionate about. As all groups do, our group has shifted over the past seven or eight months to one that is much more focused on the land and the trails. This is not a negative thing. The land that is jointly owned by the town and the school has much to offer in terms of mountain biking, hiking, and skiing. Many people utilize this land for recreation and would like to see it continue to be maintained. Although I use the trails and very much appreciate them, I don't have the drive or expertise to further this cause or add anything particularly useful. I'm sure you will have many qualified candidates that will be ready and willing to take my place. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of the startup of the Recreation Committee. As always, I appreciate the Board's willingness to support issues that contribute to the health and well-being of Moortown's residents. Yeah. Just write the whole recommendation and talk about it if you want. 
Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Because he is a pretty valuable person to have on the committee. It takes a lot to her. Right. I'd like to see her. If she's going to pass her that, I think uh, I'd like to try to work things out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. So I, I would say, yeah, I think it makes sense for the whole rec committee to. Um, that might be a little odd. It might be better if we just ask Michelle to come in. Okay. You know, Initi yeah, yeah, initially maybe. Yeah. 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 All right. Initially, just, just Michelle. Yeah, now again, the way I understood that is, okay, we're done with this, we're done working with the stuff that was my priority, and now we're working on other things. Yeah, that would be. But it's been the chat for sure. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, the, their budget isn't just for, for the trails, so. <laughs> okay, and then the. Uh, the other one from uh, Dwayne, let's see, it says Hello, all. I have received an email from a gentleman who is a Moreton resident and a parent of the elementary school is interested in our open seat. So I guess that, that's the open seat on the, the rec committee, which is an open one. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Chuck Burt. I will bring his interest in any others to our meeting in August. Just keeping everyone informed. Okay. Okay. Anything else for us on the orders? There is the state um, has one more landowner to deal with. Um, I, I'm not sure which project this is on, but they have a hearing and they're inviting you guys to it September 9th. And when he came into the office, he said that he's hoping that this person is just that hoping that this hearing is going to just go away because he's just pretty difficult. Well, if, if the project manager is Rob Young, I assume it's the bridge. Yeah, it's yeah, a pretty project. Good. That's what it is. site visit at the Moortown Town offices. And uh, let's see, the hearing is to take evidence on issues of whether there is a necess necessity to acquire certain land and or rights and property for this project. I have a closed copy of the pertinent plans for the project. 
So I'm not familiar with the process for this. Is this essentially a state function? I believe I'm so we're just a, a, a part of that. I yeah, it's believe. a state function to get the, the right of way. Okay, and it's scheduled at our town office because it's in our town. Yeah. Okay. Our town right okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just asked for the space. Mm -hmm. Okay. This gentleman that came in um, said that he thinks it won't be an issue. It's just he's had history with this person, and this is a formality, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no one from the select board needs to be. No, doesn't need to. No, they're just extending an invite to him. And does this person feel better? Is more likely to. Sign if someone goes. Anybody have any idea? I, I'm sorry. I, missed that. <laughs> <laughs> I I I don't know. I mean, I'm, maybe I should make the assumption of the, the landowner, but I, I believe he's here tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I've, I've certainly been present before, like with, with Pat, um, so I don't, I don't mind, mind being there. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's right. I need that again.
the same light here we do in the town office. I have trouble reading this. Just for the list to have to order. So.